3.23 is here, and before you start playing, let's go over some settings that you're going to want to change, as well as some new stuff that you should be aware about. First, starting off with game settings. Show hints and control hints, no and no. Aim down sights toggle, yes. This is new. You now have crosshairs on your screen at all times if you're wearing a helmet. The default, these are always on. I would leave these on because turning them off is a disadvantage. Another new setting is hit markers enabled. Again, you want to leave those on. Don't turn them off. You'll notice something's missing here if you've been following my previous videos, which is G-Safe defaulting to on or off. I will show you how to disable G-Safe easier later in the video. But remember, you're going to always want to have G-Safe off. By default, the speed limiter defaults to on. Let me show you what that looks like. If you look in the upper left, you can see the bracket on my velocity. If it's a full square like that, that means that you have to manually adjust your SCM speed or your nav mode speed. So let's say you go to nav mode right now. You can see the bracket's still fully squared. You now have to scroll up to get to max speed. This is incredibly inconvenient. You do not want this. So to go ahead, we're gonna turn the speed limiter defaults on, set that to no, and look at this. You'll notice that the square is kind of different right now. Let's switch over to nav mode. No matter what my setting is on a velocity, I will always hit max velocity, no matter what. This is incredibly important because it makes getting away easier and just makes the game just so much better to play. So yeah, definitely turn off the speed limiter. You don't need that on. Proximity assist defaults on. Set that to no. That just takes away more control of your ship. Remember, we don't want that. Flight coupled mode defaults on. Totally preference here. I personally turn this off because I spend the majority of my time flying decoupled. But again, this is totally subjective. You do you on this one. Pilot ESP strength. This is going to be your dampener. Think of it as a dampener that's going to dynamically adjust your sensitivity when you have something targeted. I personally don't touch this because I find the default setting is just fine for how I play on mouse and keyboard with my settings. But real quick, let me show you what it does. What the ESP is going to do is when I get close to it, it's going to slow down my aim. And then when I get away from it, it's going to speed back up. So again, it's a dynamic sensitivity that adjusts based on what you're targeting. You'll have to fiddle with this to see what you like most. But in general, if you're overshooting your target, then you need more ESP. And if you're undershooting your target, you need less ESP. So these are the big ones. Pilot VJoy range yaw and range pitch. Here's what the default looks like. This tail is your VJoy range. Think of this as your sensitivity. So you can make micro adjustments like this. And if you want to go really fast, you got to do this. I don't like this at all. But again, preference. What I do is lower this all the way down to four as well as the dead zone. I put this down to zero. Now let's see what it does. You see how it lowers my tail? And my ship is super snappy now. I like this. But again, as always, preference. You mess with it. Pilot velocity indicator. By default, it's set to fading. We always want this to be on. We want this always on. Again, let me show you. See those chevrons right there? That's your velocity indicator or your TVI. So I'm gonna show you why this is helpful. Let's say I wanna get around this platform. No matter where I'm going, or where I'm looking, my TVI is always going to be there. So I don't even have to look at the target. I know where my ship is going at all times based on those chevrons. So even though I'm not looking at it, I didn't even hit the platform. Super useful. Same thing with driver VJoy for range, pitch, yaw, dead zone, all the same thing. The turrets, same thing. I dropped these all the way down as well. We'll have a turret guide later in the future. But again, all this stuff down to the left. I don't touch anything here. I just keep scrolling down. Now, guns, fallback, convergence, distance. I used to set this to 100 for shooting infantry, but now I usually drop it to about 1,000. And the reason why I set this to about 1,000 is enemies now use decoys and smoke a lot more, which drops target. So if, it, if it's too low, you will actually not be able to hit your target. But if you leave it at about 1,000, which is most of the engagement ranges, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room to actually shoot targets that end up dropping lock. So around 1,000 is good. Just deal with the ground targets. They're not that much of a threat anyway. Once I get down to vehicles, targeting, enable, auto zoom, unlock target, turn that off. It is annoying. And then beneath it, vehicles targeting max auto zoom level, put it all the way down to zero just for redundancy. Pilot look ahead enabled. For some reason, there's two of these. Drop them down to no. We don't need that. And again, for redundancy, everything here is getting moved all the way to the left. Turret look ahead enabled. By default, it's set to no. That's what we want. But again, for redundancy, everything down to the left. Driver look ahead enabled. Again, same thing. No. 
everything to the left. Pilot driver turret automatically enable target padlock. What this is, is head tracking. It simulates head tracking. It's not very good, and people may tell you that it's okay. It's not. I strongly recommend that you leave it off. And if you want to have head tracking, you're going to have to just... This is not a substitute. You're going to have to actually get real head tracking, whether it's Toby or Track IR. G-Force induced head movement all the way to the left. Global camera shake. Nobody likes camera shake in their games. All the way to the left. Turn it off. Emissions HUD displays signature values. By default, it's no. I always turn it on to yes, but let me show you what it looks like by default first. In the upper left of my cutlass over here, you can see the three emissions. It's infrared, cross-section, electromagnetic. I like having those displayed numerically. So I set emissions HUD display signature values to yes. And now you can see up there, there's a numerical display of what my emissions are. I think it's nice and kind of helpful. And then the rest, I usually leave at default. And if there's something that you want to tweak, then that's again on you. Next, I go to graphics. Ton of new graphics settings here. It's going to vary based on your computer. In general, I leave them at default based on what my computer is. However, I scroll down and I go to field of view. I will always play between 90 or 103. These are the two that I play between. I usually stick at 90. Totally subjective, and this is gonna come into play more with how you play FPS and what you prefer. Note, in 3.23, this patch, they fixed the sensitivity scaling. So you can actually now have a higher field of view without hurting your in-game sensitivity when fighting on the ground. Motion blur, turn it off. Chromatic aberrations, I turn it all the way down to the left and turn it off. Film grain, no. And I leave the QR code off as well. Audio, whatever, subjective. The only thing I change here is audio driven camera shake strength. That means that when you're shooting or being shot at, your camera's gonna jitter all over the place. You don't need that stuff. This is not a movie, it's a video game. Turn it all the way over to the left. So key binding is gonna be a big one. They've changed the majority of the key bindings from the previous patch to this one. So things that you're used to using are no longer going to work. You're gonna to have to figure that out on your own. But the one I do wanna point out that specifically threw me off was for on foot, they changed prone from I believe X to control and crouch is now on C. I don't like that. I'm gonna go back and change that. They changed a few other things on foot but those are the two most noticeable ones. So let's get over to controls. Sensitivity here, totally subjective. As you guys know, I play very low. I usually go to about five. I don't touch anything else here at all. Everything else I leave. You tweak this to your own discretion. Let's head back over to key bindings and let's show you guys some of the binds I use. So the first one I do is I go to vehicles cockpit at the top. I go to open all doors. I set that to semicolon and close all doors. I said to apostrophe, you can do toggle, but I find toggle to be a lot less granular. But again, let me show you how cool this is. So I want to open it up. I just press this button and check it out. Everything opens up and I want to close it. I can even cancel it mid open and close. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I love it. So do you remember how at the start I said that you could no longer turn G safe off by default? For some reason they changed that. I don't know, but we don't want G safe on. Again, it takes control away from us and our ship. So under flight movement, we're going to scroll down until we find G-Force safety on off toggle. Now we're gonna find a key for this. Use whatever you want. For now, I'm just gonna use INS, just for example. So now if we wanna turn our G-Safe off, which is again, always on, I just press INS, G-Safe is off. I now have full control of my ship. Always turn this off, make sure you have this bind. Another very important bind that I have is cycle mouse mode between VJoy and relative. I will set this to caps lock. And here's what it does. So by default, you have this VJoy tail, right? And it's whatever. It's, it's, it's nice for steering. But what if you want to be more precise? If I activate relative mode, look how precise that is. Gets rid of the tail and it makes it, you know, pretty much stable with the mouse movement. This is best used for lining up precise shots on ground targets or even just landing. You can do some pretty crazy landings with this too. If you just want to like, let's say I want to go here. I want to open my doors. I want to be very precise about this door. Because I'm on relative mode, look how precise I can be with this. Except for that clipping through the station, but we'll we'll ignore that. Let's pretend like that didn't happen, right? But you get the point. Look at this. And it's rock solid. It's not going to move. This is the real joy of having relative mode set to a key bind. Use your imagination. You guys will figure out how to use it. One of the things that I unbind all the time is lock, pitch, yaw of movement. By default, it's set to right shift. You've probably hit this before and did not even know it. 
But let's look at what it does. So here you got your tail, you can move it around, no problem. But what if I hit right shift? What happens to this ship? The tail shows up, but the ship stops moving. This is really annoying. I don't see the purpose of this, especially if you have relative mode bound. So you want to get rid of it so you can control your ship. Unbind it. And now it's going to be unbound. Goodbye, bad setting. You can also have hotkey set to request landing and to request cargo loading. That way you don't have to use your Moby glass. By default, there is set to left alt N and right alt N. Not a lot of people know that, so I wanted to point that one out real quick. The next thing I do is go to vehicles targeting. Again, I don't use the pins. I don't find use for them, so I unbind these keys because I'm going to use them for my shields and my power system. So I go to vehicles targeting, I find pin index 1, 2, and 3, and I right click and I get rid of these. The next thing I do is I scroll down to enter remote turret, and I find a key bind for this. So I usually want to have two for these. Now, I showed you the G-Safe as an example with INS. I will go back and change that myself. But again, for demonstration purposes here, I will do enter remote turret one, which is the top one to INS and enter remote turret two to delete. This comes in handy whenever you're in the A2 or something that has two remote turrets. That way you can go between remote turret one and remote turret two with just a key press. It's very helpful. All right, so let me show you how useful this remote turret key bind is. So right now I'm in the co-pilot seat of the A2. I have access to two remote turrets. If I press insert, I'm in remote turret one. And if I press delete, I'm in remote turret two. If I press Y, I'm out of the remote turret. The next thing I do is I go down to vehicles target cycling. I do not use cycle lock forwarding or resetting at all personally. So I will unbind these because this is also going to be used for my power triangle. The next section I go down to is vehicles weapons. I expand it and I scroll down until I find gunnery UI magnification toggle. So I'm going to show you what this does. I will for now set this to control again. Use what works for you. I'm going to use control. So when we have a ship targeted by default. You can see how that crosshair is It's kind of small, isn't it? It's kind of hard to see it. What happens when we hit this button? Isn't that so much better? You can now see the pips. Look how clear that is. I don't know why this is not a default setting. Next thing I do is I go down to vehicle shields and countermeasures. I go to decoy launch burst and I change this to the one of the buttons on the side of my mouse. So this is for your flares. Then I go down to noise. I set this to another button. This is so much easier when you're in combat because you want to keep your hands on your keyboard. So I just press my mouse button there and look, it just shoots a flare out. And then same thing with noise, another button. And then the noise comes out and just makes a big old mess right there and obscures my enemy's vision. The next one I go to is vehicles, power, triangle assignment. Now this is the big one. This is what separates the men from the, the boys, so to speak, right? Weapons set to max. One, ignore this. There's no conflict here. Engines set to max three. Shields set to max two. Reset assignments by default is set to F8. I just set it to four. Remember, that's why I unbound those things. So let's check it out in action to show you how easy this is. All right, so now we're about neutral. Let's hit weapons. Let's hit shields. Let's hit engines. And let's hit to reset. That's everything you need right there, boys. So you remember how I talked about how they change around some of the defaults? So if you want to set those back to what you had, you're going to have to go to on foot all. The only thing I really change is I put prone back to X. It, it doesn't ruin anything here. I put crouch back to control. So that's the end of the keybinds guide. If there's anything in particular that you have questions about that I didn't cover, please ask in the comments and I'll answer them for you. This is pretty much comprehensive. There's a lot of things on there that you just don't need to know or fiddle with at all. I just covered the important stuff. There are new features that I will cover in their own specific guides in the near future, such as gimbals and sniper mode and all that stuff. But for now, here's the basics to get you started. Enjoy yourselves. Hope you have fun.